It's time for Over There with Morella Rostroffer. Morella is our European correspondent. She joins us weekly. I have it on good authority that she is still over here, but not for that much longer. We can't wait to hear what she talks about from over there. Hello, Morella. How are you? Hello, Jill. Yes, absolutely. A couple of days longer over here. But, of course, thinking of um, our European um, conversation pieces. Um, and today I'm going to go into the direction of uh, summer holidays, since um, this is, again, the time of the year where people are going to begin traveling um, a little bit more uh, than um, the rest of the year, um, at least uh, for certain cities in Europe. And that is exactly uh, the topic that I thought remains really interesting in, uh, in Europe is the amount, the amount of tourists in certain uh, European cities. Um, as you know, we spoke about this uh, previously. We took at the time the example of uh, Barcelona, uh, where local people um, are were being uh, quite uh, passive aggressive and vocal about the fact that they could not take as many tourists anymore. Um, since uh, it was changing the lifestyle of the city in uh, in a very dramatic way. Um, today I wanted to focus on Venice because um, it's a, uh, a, a beautiful city in Italy that attracts uh, many tourists, um, that has actually a real booming uh, tourist industry, um, leaves a lot of, out of it, but also suffers a lot out of it. As a, as a matter of fact, uh, mid-March, I believe the 15th of March, um, the young people in Venice followed their uh, peers in uh, many other cities uh, who were skipping school and uh, striking for the climate. Uh, asking uh, for a uh, for, for many things, but um, also for a much better regulation of uh, mass tourism uh, in uh, in their city. Um, it is especially important for Venice to find solution, as uh, this is a city that um, is slowly sinking into water. So the more uh, the water is rising uh, globally uh, in the world, the more a place like Venice is really at risk to, at one point, um, basically completely disappear, which is very difficult to imagine, but it is a possibility um, in the future. Um, so for the moment, uh, the, the, the numbers are of, of tourists a year are around 25 million, which is already a lot, but it is projected to reach over 35 million uh, by 2025. Uh, this is uh, in the very near future. And nobody knows really if the city is even able to um, take in uh, so many tourists. Um, other examples of cities that are struggling with the same um, matters are, as I said previously, Barcelona, but also cities uh, that are very popular like Amsterdam, like Dubrovnik, especially since Games of Thrones um, uh, has been uh, there for for. Uh, for the movie, uh, for the series, uh, this has also attracted uh, many um, fans of uh, of the series, wanting to see those uh, wonderful places and uh, and landscapes. Um, one cannot completely 
um, eliminate tourism because uh, w fairly enough, it's also a way of living for many people. Uh, but they are uh, solutions and especially when it comes for example to uh, Airbnb uh, the, the, the the crisis is uh, is really serious because this uh, lead uh, the, the, the the city to have a very little um, housing for uh, its own population and when there is something uh, the prices are naturally uh, uh, very high which is one of the reason uh, people are there are very upset. Um, they are solutions like uh, right now a platform called Fair BNB is uh, trying to um, uh, get sufficient funds, suffic sufficient money to be a counterbalance to Airbnb. Um, that would be. Um, a platform that uh, gives 50% uh, of the revenue to uh, local projects and also encourage tourists to, uh, in a way, participate to local life um, in participating uh, to these uh, local projects. This uh, sounds like a very good idea, theoretically. Now, how many people um, are going to, um, uh, ha you know, make uh, the effort to fly uh, over to Italy, uh, going to Venice or and 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 participate to local ha life instead of visiting the obvious um, the obvious uh, places in Venice that one wants to see in the city. This is this is really very debatable. But it's a, it's a project. Uh, it's called Fair BNB. It's trying to get the funds, and it definitely has um, very good intentions. Um, one of the main problems in Venice are also the gigantic cruise ships that enter the lagoon of Venice um, uh, every day. In 2016, I think I even mentioned that at the time, a small boat, some local uh, uh, people were trying to stop uh, those uh, gigantic uh, cruise ships because they enter the lagoon, this is very bad for the lagoon, then they literally pour in the city but spend actually very little money and that's where also the problem lies for the local people. Um, because they are on a cruise ship, it's uh, uh, they make a stop in Venice, they might have a bite in Venice but they don't really spend their money in Venice because they spend it already on the cost of their cruise and this is something that uh, is a real problem. It is also for having seen that myself a little bit of a visual uh, problem not only environmental but it just doesn't when you are in such a small place the lagoon of Venice is really very small and you see these absolutely gigantic cruise ships entering it's it's very overwhelming um, and it's um, you, you one really gets the feeling that those ships don't belong there uh, they create a lot of pollution and uh, um, they, there should be, there, there is the request for a better uh, regulation. Um, what is also interesting in Venice um, is, uh, is that uh, people have developed there what they call some kind of tourism phobia um, over tourism. Um, and uh, and and you will barely meet any Venetians. That is uh, also a consequence of um, uh, of, uh, of of this kind of uh, mass tourism. Is that it's very difficult to even meet uh, local people, and that makes the entire experience a little bit weird. When in a city, you are not able to speak to. Uh, to, to any locals. Um, also that um, 
brings some thinking in terms of uh, traveling because as I mentioned um, a, a week ago or two weeks ago, um, there is also in, uh, in Europe a, a new wave of thinking in terms of traveling um, that comes uh, very much from the initiative of, um, of Sweden where there is this, um, um, how, how can I call that? There is this kind of initiative or at least wave of thinking that uh, seems to believe that it's uh, uh, not necessary to travel all the time. And if one does travel, it has to be in a very environmental friendly way. Uh, for example, uh, possibly by not flying when the trips are uh, not too much of a long distance, um, possibly um, trying to uh, take the train instead of the uh, of the planes, uh, not uh, of course going into these large uh, cruise boats, but trying to respect more. The, the local environment of the cities that um, um, that are so beautiful and great uh, to visit. So one should uh, definitely consider the fact that like at the moment in every field, there is a shift in uh, thinking. And what's going to be most interesting, interesting is to see in which way this uh, shift in thinking is also going to translate in, uh, in a shift uh, in uh, acting. Um, and that uh, will be to be seen. Thank you very much, Mirella Rostroffer, over there. My pleasure.